I'm for like humanely uh, like killing them. I think animals could be bred uh, in good conditions and allowed to live in good conditions. Well, you know, I'm not for any suffering, any death, or anything like that. But maybe they could find a, a nicer way to do it. Well, I think there is a way to do it that isn't as cruel as the way they do it. There's much more better ways that they could do it. Obviously, I didn't, I didn't never seen any of this stuff. Uh -huh. It's not as if they're slaughtered only mainly. You know, it's done in a controlled environment, the okay. stress on the animals, uh, okay. it's kept to like a minimum, you know. People might have a much better way to actually slaughter the animals and serve them into the market. Yeah. No, I said this fine they eat meat, but I disagree with the way they kill them. It all depends on how, again, they're treated and how they're culled. I mean... Is there a right way to kill someone? No, there isn't. But... Thanks for being honest. What's a humane way of slaughtering an animal? Well, look, less pain they feel, the better. Okay. Yeah, even if it was kept to a minimum, do you think it would be morally justified to, you know, take someone's life against their will, even if the stress was kept to a minimum? Um, not really, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Put, I'm just asking you to put yourself in the victim's position. Yeah, yeah. So you think it's humane to electrically shock someone and stab them in the throat, drain them the blood and chop them up into pieces for a product that we don't necessarily need? That's a loaded question. What, what would you say is the best way to slaughter someone? I've never actually thought about it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. Honestly, I've never thought about it. Yeah. We make sure that they are free from predation. Okay. We make sure that they suffer from no diseases. We give them regu regular drenches and vaccinations to ensure that they don't contract any sort of diseases. I wouldn't con contest any of that, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing that because it's in your economic interest to look after your stock. Not because you care about the rights of these animals, otherwise you wouldn't be chopping them up into pieces and selling them to people. Hmm. I didn't know that they were being treated like that. You know what I mean? What's the ethical way of killing someone if they don't want to die? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be more humane to leave them be and eat plants? Well, the people dying around the world every day and we can't save them all. Can you draw a picture in, no, in the... No, I can't. I'm not an expert on that sort of thing, so I wouldn't be able to say to you what a, a, a painless death would be, other than that if the animal died instantly, you would assume that that was a painless death. But do you think that, even the best way, it's cruel to rob someone of their life? No, you see, you keep using someone, I don't accept your premise. No, you see, you keep using someone, I don't accept your premise. We're talking about animals here. Yeah. So they don't feel pain, suffer, you know? Everything? Yeah, everything. everything, everyone. Everything. Everyone, animals aren't things. Yep. But can you correlate an animal, like a cow, yeah. to a human being? Yes. How? Human beings are also animals. Uh, I'll give you that for the purpose of this conversation. Biology. Well, let's look at what we have in common with animals. We're both sentient, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Feel pain, yeah, suffer, yeah, want yeah, to live, yeah. we have families, we... We have will, we have desires. Yeah, they're not a person, so it's a thing. No, they're, they're sentient beings. They're having a subjective experience like you, they're someone. They, they've got a personality, they want to escape pain, they suffer. They're not plants. It's not a person. Doesn't matter if it's not a person. Have you ever seen a cow being milked? It is in pain. When they see the calf being taken from it, it isn't... Anyone who says an animal has not got human emo well, I would say human emotions. What kind of a thing is a human emotion? An animal has got just as much emotion as a human. I have seen tears yeah. when they're pulling the calf away from yeah. the cow. It's disgusting, yeah. the whole lot of it. One is a human being who, you know, has like, you, you know, like a capability of intelligence and stuff. Wow. And the other one is pigs don't have capability for intelligence. I mean, but do you think they shouldn't be treated cruelly for some reason? If they ain't someone, who gives a f**k? Well, again, I don't see. You know I don't what I mean? Accept, I don't accept someone. 
Yeah, but I think this is where the premise, our argument falls down because the premise is different. Well, I'm just saying it. You give these animals enough moral value that they shouldn't yep. be treated cruelly. For some reason, if yep. they're not someone, who cares? But obviously, their consciousness is not at a level where we are in the sense that we can in, we can manipulate our environment like okay. almost completely to suit our needs. Animals don't really have that. I mean, they have it to a degree. I mean, they haven't like invent. I mean, it's an. Uh, I mean, it's an uh, instinct. They haven't like invented, you know, rockets and stuff. And uh, like, have you invented a rocket? I mean, no, I haven't, but, you know. Okay. The implication that you suggested beforehand that they, so forth, deserve some sort of... They deserve rights, per se. A right not to be killed and enslaved and treated as food and property and products, yeah. That right. Hmm. Why wouldn't we grant those same rights to animals, even if they don't have complex cognition like you do? Only because they're called animals. Seriously, I mean, yeah, so, I'm so, not trying to be funny, oh, I'm just saying because we know them as animals, then they're just not humans, and so they can't uh, have that's, human rights. I get it. So, do, you know, do you understand? Do you know we use that to justify what we do to humans as well? We call them animals. Yeah, I know people have done that. I know people have done that in the past, but then animals are actually animals. Um, again, it doesn't take away. I mean, that was terrible. I've, I, had, I genuinely had no idea that that happened to beef before... Or, I got the beef. Cows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or the cow. Beef comes from a cow. <laughs> but, You're just separating the yeah, two. Yeah, 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 but you know, I mean, I, I didn't know. If we, if we, if we just uh, recognise that animals have the ability to suffer and want to live and feel pain and value their families, you know, we don't necessarily have to grant them all these amazing things, you know, like, Absolutely. you know, but at least leave them alone and respect them based on that. Um, I could get with that. Yeah. The other side of that would be um, give me something to replace okay, that yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. Do you understand? Um, a practical issue would Yeah. Come. Don't you think you're causing suffering to the plants? Just because they don't, we don't hear them scream, we don't see the blood coming out. Plants are living things. If you say that I abuse animals, you abuse plants. You're a, a plant killer. You're talking about this, what? Do you think about the plant chef, you farmers, viciously take out the ground? What about them? Don't you think they they suffer from pain when you? Absolutely not. They do. I'm asked. Do you think there's a difference between stabbing a pig in the throat like I showed you, mm. and cutting a carrot up for yeah. soup? More or less the same. They're the same. You know, lot of people thinking or believing they are innocent or allowed to do boiling like like a soya bean. Ah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They feel. Do you think they feel pain? Soya beans feel pain. I'm not Ouch. sure. Pain. Like I never talk to its being. But like even plant-based substances too. Like you know your veggies and stuff. They're all still naturally uh, living, breathing uh, organisms. So would you do you think a, do you think a carrot's the same as kicking a kid in the head? No, but it's, it's carrots. No, but you're gonna put living. a carrot on the same plane as a sentient animal. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. But so do you think you, you think a carrot's the same as a kid or a a dog. If I turn into vegan, in my opinion, I'm still making someone suffer. So why turn into certain things? Just eat whatever is there. That's what you're trying so to you do. Just yeah, do. You're saying, eat you're whatever saying is there, right? plants and animals are the same. It doesn't matter what cruelty you cause to the to the animals because the plants feel the same amount of pain. Yeah. Not the same, because we don't know. But in my opinion, like, we do know. We do know. What's the difference between a lettuce and a human being? Lots of things. Okay. A lettuce grows. Wait, a lettuce Humans is alive. Don't grow. A lettuce is alive. Humans don't grow. Wait a second, a lettuce is alive. Aren't they the same? Nah. Humans and lettuce are the same. They matter the same ethically, don't they? No, they don't. Okay, do animals and lettuce matter the same them. ethically? No. Okay, you okay, there you go. They're not sentient. They don't have a central How nervous do you know? system. Do you think stabbing a uh, puppy dog in the throat is the same as cutting up a carrot? How do you know what plants feel? Yeah, because they're, they're, they don't have a brain or, do a, or a central nervous system. Do you accept they're system. living things? They're living, but they're not sentient. You don't mind slaughtering living plants? Yes, I because think they don't feel argument, pain. That argument's really If you're boring. in hospital and you're paralysed, what do they call you? A vegetable? No scientist alive believes a tomato is suffering the same way that a rabbit or pig or chicken or dog suffers, well, or how you. how do you know that, though? Because they can tell with science. There's no nerves, there's no brain, there's no consciousness. So if you're yeah. on the side of animals, then why yeah, not on the side they of plants? Do, they don't have heart, they're not beating well, you. No, but they are alive. They, they well, uh, cheese, do you think there's... Eat. Well, I'll ask you the same question. If you're on the side of humans, why aren't you on the side of tomatoes? Well, I am. <laughs> well, that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, so you care about tomatoes, do you? Morally. 
Yeah. Ethically, do you I care about a them. I don't eat them, so. Do you care about a, a, a vegetable? A, a, a sweet potato? No, you don't. So you, you don't, yeah. Oh, well, we don't care morally about plants because they don't have a brain and nervous system. They can't suffer. They... Right. So they don't have a brain, no nervous system, and they can't suffer. And they don't perceive, perceive reality. There's no subject. So me and you, we have a subject, a personality, someone inside us experiencing things. A plant does not have a subject inside of there. They don't have consciousness. Right. They can react to stimuli in the environment, like your phone might react when you touch it and they right. respond. Yeah. But like they don't, there's no one in there that suffers like in a, t a turkey or in a pig. Right, right. So that's the answer. Yeah. That's a well good answer. Thank Take this, man. Here, put, put it in. No, that's all right. Just put it in here. No. And how about this? You know, the animals that you eat actually eat plants too. So you're causing more plant deaths by eating animals. There we go. So, so well, why don't you just make the more ethical choice? I don't think plants feel pain at all. You don't either, because if I kicked a carrot, you wouldn't care. But if I, I kicked a puppy, ball. if I kicked a puppy, you would probably punch me in the head. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's also down to my own personal choice. What everyone else wants to do is what they want to do. What I want to do is what I want to do. Do you get me? I'm not like one of them people that sit here and say, oh, well, you, you're weird if you don't eat meat or all like that. Well, no, it's your choice. It's less of a global challenge and more of a personal preference in it nowadays, I would say. It's my choice. That's their choice and I'm not going to so judge them for their choice, whereas they shouldn't judge me for my choice. Okay. So if you want to choose to be vegan for seven years and I want to be, you know, eating meat for seven or eight years or my whole life, I can do. People should do what they want to do. You really believe that? Yeah, yeah, yeah and I believe if you want to eat an animal, then eat it. There's a victim involved, you know that, yeah? yeah. Obviously. Yes, I do. How can that be a personal choice? It's a personal choice to buy the meat and eat the meat. But, but there's yeah, someone else involved there, bro. Personal choice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Personal choice to do lots of things, man, eh? You know? But when there's animals involved, it's like a choice that is cruel, you know? But I'm asking, is, is the personal choice a moral choice? Not whether it's a personal choice or, or whatever, even though it's not really personal, there's a pig involved getting stabbed for bacon. Do you know what I mean? Like that's just another little... Yeah, thing there. I didn't, yeah, I yeah, didn't. I had a little thing that's not really personal I choice. A bit of spice. There's a victim involved <laughs> yeah, with this well, choice. It's a choice, I'd say it's a choice. But what if the, the choice has a victim? Like, I could go up and kill and eat a cat, but that's, uh, you would say that's morally wrong. It's a choice, it's my choice, but mm -hmm. I'm asking, like, what's ethical? What's a moral choice to make? So, when you talk about choices, right, you can talk about, like, making a choice. I could make a choice right now to shoot that guy in the face with a shotgun. Right, that's a choice. Okay, yeah. So psychopaths that kill and eat people, you know, there's a few of them. Jeffrey Dahmer was one of them. His line was we included humans. Yeah. Was that okay? It was his personal choice. Kinda, to a degree. Like, <laughs> I'm, ta I'm taking like that degree to that degree. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I feel like yeah, people ultimately should be able to make their own choices. You're right. We don't have to, but we choose to. You right. ch you're making a choice. You're we choosing to be choice. cruel. Yeah. You're choosing to be cruel. But it's a choice again. I know, and you're choosing to abuse animals when you don't make the vegan choice. So you're saying everyone has to make that choice? Conscious people who pay for animals to be abused, they're a conscious animal abuser. There's no way around that. What would you prefer me to do? Go out to a game reserve and kill my own meat? I'd prefer you just didn't kill animals if it wasn't... 100% necessary in any context. I still like chicken and stuff. I mean, KFC is pretty nice. I like my Sunday roast. Yeah? I used to as well, yeah? Yeah, I, you know, I like going, well, yeah, having a bacon sarnie. You eat meat, yeah. I like meat. Yeah, why? Because it's tasty. Yeah. Well, oh, I like heavy meat. I enjoy that. I like the flavour. Like the fat in the pan. Yeah, yeah. Been fried. Crispy in that, eh? Yeah. What do you mean by you like eating meat? I, I mean, I like the taste of it. You like the taste? So taste is a pleasure response or it's yeah. a it's a sensory, yeah, you know... It's sensory. So it's sensory. Yeah. Because it tastes good. Yeah. Um, I'm not much of a foodie. I'd rather be doing something else than eating. But when I have to eat, then yeah, meat is good. Yeah. Tastes good. So like, obviously it's a little bit more indirect, but you're deriving pleasure from an animal being killed, yeah? So sensory pleasure. I mean, like people like to smoke, you know. Yeah, but there's no animal getting knifed in the throat for a cigarette. Why do you eat steak? Do you care about sentience? No, I love steak. I like steak do because you care I about like consciousness. Brown. You know when you brown a steak and the nice crust on it. You like the taste. Black pepper and some red wine. It's good. Do you like the taste of animal abuse. Love it. Yeah. So love you obviously don't care about animals. Do you like the taste. Yeah. I would. I would just ask you a question. Do you think like because you get 
pleasure out of something, does that morally justify like an act of cruelty, like cutting an animal's head off? <laughs> um, like I could get pleasure from doing a lot of horrific things. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But I like to. You, I, I like to as well. Yeah. I like to eat steak and well, burgers as well, but I, I don't know, you know what I mean? Because uh, I, I think it's wrong to, to rob someone of their life for a five minute meal when I can eat plants now. But let's just say you didn't like the taste of the vegan cheeses. Would you continue to pay for this to happen? Would I, would I still buy cheese? Yeah. 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 So even though this happens to cows, they get raped, they get killed, they have their children stolen. You'd say the taste of cheese outweighs this suffering and death? Do you think that sensory pleasure justifies what we do to animals for food? Just because you get pleasure out of an action, if that pleasure causes another being cruelty, trauma, violence, do you think that pleasure justifies that cruelty, trauma or violence? No. Okay. Oh no. So you're using no. it tastes good as an excuse. You enjoy the taste. So what do you think is more important, like your taste or an animal's uh, life? Animal's life, definitely. Because there's people out there that enjoy sex, but that doesn't mean that they can go out and just rape whoever they want. Because they think you got to think of the victim. Yeah. So when you like, I, I might really love the taste of a steak, you know, but I I think that the animal's rights matter more than me having that pleasure. No, I agree. Definitely. Like, oh, I can't. Like, I, I can't really argue against. <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I make it so that you can't argue against yeah, it. Don't you yeah, worry. Yeah. yeah I, I make it really solid, uh, really solid argument for animal rights. Human beings been eating meat for thousands of years. And then we human being has been eating animal, hunting, you know, the started as a hunter gatherer. That is what's been going on for 8,000 years. We've been drinking milk. But if you think about it, people have been killing animals and stuff for as long as you can remember, do you know what I mean? I mean, they've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. Like. You, you have to look at nature, you have to look at the human being, you have to look at the last 200,000 years and, the, and, and how we've evolved and what we've become. We've always done it. Yeah, but we've always done horrific things to each other throughout history. But we've always done it. I mean, like, humans have been eating meat, you know, for centuries. Thousands of years, probably mil it might be in the millions, I'm not sure, but like scavenging and trying to survive, eating yeah. what we can. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Do you think it's justified because we've been doing it for a long time? Yes, of course it's justified. Yeah. So if we do anything because for a long time, then it becomes justified? It's part of nature, so... We've been doing horrible things to each other for the same amount of time, haven't we? Yes. But we can change, can't we? Yes. We can change, yeah. You don't think that just because something's been happening for a long time that that makes it ethical? No, I don't yeah. think that. But, what but you're just saying it's been normalised yeah. because it's been happening for so long. So, like, with yeah. Vikings and stuff, they get meat yeah. to keep themselves ready and active for yeah. when they're, like, fighting in wars and stuff. Do you think that because we've done something traditionally that it's morally justified? Not always. For instance, we, in this society, have had institutional racism for a very long time. We've always done it but we have found a way to okay. not do it. Okay. So, well, how does that justify, how does we always have done it justify animal cruelty and abuse and killing, but well, not justify racism? This day and age, don't look 100,000 years ago when we had to do it to survive. This day and age, it's unnecessary to put <laughs> innocent beings inside of a gas chamber or into a slaughterhouse. So, uh, humans have actually, their teeth have developed over like years. And, um, okay. so, We've actually developed eat meat. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And in what way? Our teeth? Let me show, you, show me your teeth. Okay. We've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine show me teeth. yours. And why do you have those teeth? For biting into apples, I don't know. No, they're not. It's an incisor, man. It's for cutting it's meat. It's actually a canine. If uh, we weren't uh, uh, like a... Uh, Omnivores, we wouldn't have like these, like you know, teeth, like sharp teeth. <laughs> Where are your sharp teeth? Don't point at your teeth. Yeah, they're, they're very blunt and flat, and you have molars, and you grind your jaw side to side for the chewing motion for like uh, grazing on plant products. You have the tiniest canines I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah for cutting meat. These are it's incisors. A, it's, it's a for canine. Rip, to rip yeah. meat. Who said that? Who told you that? So you got claws? Where's, Where's your claws? Shot? Where's your claws? Man, your ancestors were apes, man. So, ate, so and apes eat meat. You think these justify this? Interesting that you think that the reason that we that meat shouldn't be illegal is because we've evolved into omnivores. I'm not really seeing your biological adaptations to chase animals and consume them. 
Ah, uh, right, okay. Yeah. So I don't think see see you as adapted to chasing down animals with your, you know, oh, right. you know, and your your teeth look flat and blunt. Yeah. Um, you're pointing to these canines. If you see a proper omnivore, they, their jaw got hinges up and down. Yeah. Ours yeah. goes like this for grinding, like yeah, a cow. Yeah, Seen yeah. a cow eat? Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay. Well, they it's... look very flat and blunt, like a cow's teeth. No, that's teeth. the molars at the back. So... But the canines are, were developed to, so... uh, to, to, to chew meat, it's to bite meat. It's unnecessary to eat no, no, meat to I be healthy. No, but I developed teeth to do that. So why have I developed teeth to do Just that? Just because you can eat an animal doesn't make it moral to do so, OK? We can process those plants into well, flesh as well. Actually, we're omnivores. We're able to both eat meat and plants. Just because we're able to do it doesn't mean that we're biologically designed to eat meat and plants. It means that we're opportunistic eaters and we ate what we could back in the days and now that we're you know obviously in a civilized society we don't have to go hunt you don't have claws you don't have predatory instincts you sweat out of your pores like other herbivores you have flat blunt teeth and pathetic little canines how do we justify a mass holocaust of animals and obviously you think animals feel pain and desire a, a, a life without suffering because otherwise you'd be for torturing hmm. I mean lions don't feel guilty for killing deer It's very, it's not kind. Animals constantly kill each other in very horrible, destructive and inhumane ways. What do you think in, about uh, Africa and where the lions kill the animals? Even the, the animals attack each other. You of course they do. They do. But interestingly enough, ants, they also farm insects. You know how a dog will go eat, a, like, wild, it'll go get a rabbit, which is meat. So why can't we go and get a cow, which is meat? Why can't I kill you for meat? Why don't you? That's the thing. Well, why can't I? Because you think it's morally wrong. We as a society believe killing, when it's, there's no justification for it, is morally wrong. We have plant foods to eat. And what we're doing to cows is unjustified. We don't have a, we don't have a reason to do this to cows. Do you know the black widow spider eats her mate after they've mated? Uh, yes. Should we copy that behaviour? No, because I so, don't see how that's going to help anything. So why are you using ants' behaviour as a justification for exploiting others? Because you're using, well, you know ants, they actually exploit insects. Well, you know black widow spiders eat their mate afterwards. You know lions eat their cubs. How does that justify our abuse and exploitation of animals in a, a modern civilised society when we have moral agency and we don't have a justification? Hmm. Well, lions are in a survival situation, are you? Uh, well, uh, no. no. We could yeah. live off not eating meat. Yeah, like I you... could probably live off not eating meat. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, do, I have for seven years. They're in a different situation to you. That's why I talked about your moral framework, not lions. Okay. Do you see what you did there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you went put into a lion's morality yeah. to us. We have, we are morally culp are held morally culpable for our actions with our conscience and with laws. <laughs> well, lions eat people. Hey, you know that lions eat people? No. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Lions, lions have been known to, to yeah, hunt down people. I'm just yeah, saying. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, wait, wait a second, I'm just saying if a lion hunts down people and eats people, does that mean I can hunt down people and eat people or should I just like be no, ethical? That's cannibalism. Yeah, you can. I mean, I'm just asking what's ethical, not what's cannibalism. I'm talking about Very ethics. controversial ethics. And if you've seen video of lions eating zebras while the zebra is still alive, that's, that's pretty disgusting. That's not humane at all. Of course not. It's horrible. But and I wouldn't do that. Nature. That happens in nature every day. Yeah, but you, that's an appeal to nature. It's a fa fallacious reasoning. There's horrible... Th rape happens in nature. Murder happens in nature. You can't use that reasoning for a civilised society. Yeah, but we don't attack each other, do we? No, we don't attack each other. We try not to. People do. Yeah, but we think that's unethical, don't we? Yeah, it's wrong. It's so wrong. I mean, yeah. the wars are so wrong. So we don't... We try not to behave like animals who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're civilised, yeah. We, yeah. But we contradict nature all the time. You contradict nature all the time. I contradict nature all the time. Sure. If we follow nature, we're killing each other. We're turning into tri vicious tribes people. No, that's actually n very natural. To murder each other? Yeah. But you don't agree with murder? No. Human beings killed their children. We put them in jail for murder. Lions eat their cubs all the time. Okay? Now, why, if we were okay doing what a lion does, why can't we eat our own children, murder them? Because we don't want to live in a lion-like society. Well, there you go. Answered my question for me. Past rules. You actually made my point for me. We don't want to live in a lion-like society. So why go? Why, why choose one thing a lion does, which is eat a zebra, to justify what we do to animals? Why do we choose that? We don't copy everything else they do. Why don't you say you just be vegan and stop paying for animal abuse? Because I don't want to be a vegan. So you want to pay for animal I think abuse? Veganism is very unhealthy. And very 
extremist. I don't think anybody that, that just ate vegetables alone would have a, have a healthy lifestyle. We can't survive without meat. Like, we need, we need, you know. we need meat to survive. Yeah. We need meat, you know, for our diets. You can't expect feed a human body with a plant to perform on the level we meant we're supposed to function. I completely oppose that with scientific data. Bro, you know, um, you know, you have a mount, mountains of science supporting plant-based diets, and it's just the, the evidence isn't on your team with this. I don't see how I could sustain myself on a solely plant-based diet. Because you can't see yourself, how you could sustain yourself, does that mean you can't? I don't know, because I haven't tried it, so I'm not going to say no yet, but I mean... I'm sure you're very healthy, but you know, we're led to believe from various reports that you will, that you will uh, read that you will need to take supplements at some stage to make up for the proteins or the fats or the things that perhaps we've been used to throughout our life. I have to cut you off there. Where do you think protein originally comes from? The, the thing is, meat and protein is a very is strong and reliable source of essential nutrients. You, you disagree? A reliable source? I think, uh, you know, you can obviously eat plant-based 100% and be completely healthy and all protein originally comes from plants. You would have been taught that, yeah? Do you think you can get protein by eating plants? That's what I'll just ask you. I, yeah, yeah, no, yes, you can get vitamins and protein from plants. Yeah. I know that. Okay. So they turn the plants into their flesh and we go and shoot them in the head and eat their flesh. You're saying that this is a reliable source of protein, this is why we do it. Hmm. It's second-hand protein, by the way. Uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is one of the largest uh, nutrition uh, group of professionals on earth, about 100,000 yeah. of them collectively, uh, and it was a peer-reviewed paper saying that vegan diets are healthy for all stages of life, including af uh, athletes, infancy, pregnant women. Uh, what do you think about that, that science? Well, uh, w uh, uh, well, well, the thing is that there are like studies which I like claim that vegan like diet is not like good for a child or for you know a newborn. You know, it like it needs you know a bit of meat, a bit of everything. I haven't seen any of those studies uh, peer-reviewed at all. I mean, I've seen articles, but I've never seen any peer-reviewed studies. I mean, like you should uh, 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 like there, like you know, peer-reviewed studies now. You know, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics isn't a vegan organisation. They're a group of non-vegan, probably predominantly non-vegan, uh, you know, doctors and dietetics and nutritionists. And so what I'm saying is they had 117 studies backing their statement. We can't survive. We can't survive without meat. We, we can't really. We need, the, we need the red, we need the blood, we need the, all the different vitamins. We need all iron, protein. Uh, how long do you think I've been vegan? How long do you think I've been? A guess. A year? A year? Should be dead by then. Right, well, hold no, on. I'm seven years vegan. Right, that's fine. I'm just like my friends. I've got friends that are vegan. I, well, I enjoy my meat. I've been brought up with it. So was All I. my life. Yeah. Yeah. So was I. yeah. That's. I'm used to that. That's kind of how I, I've been raised around meat and eating. So was it's I. Like, I, said, I can't. So was I. I don't eh? think a video is going to make me stop eating it. If it's well, like I've already done it, so. I, I don't know if it's just a Scottish thing. We've been brought up on meat and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So is I, eh? I, No, I know, I know what you're saying, and, and it's all... I'm half Scottish. Reversed, I know, but I'm not just talking about Scottish, I'm talking about all over the world. Yeah, we all, we all raised our meat. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, we're all raised on meat, yeah. Um, Who taught you that, that dead animals are food? Um, I think it's just in our culture, kind of. Um, yeah. And it's in a lot of cultures, it you is. know. Um, Indoctrination, isn't it? And, yeah. yeah. We've been taught that it's cows of food and yeah, especially in western society you know you're taught as a child you get your food from the shops yeah there's no explanation it's no investigation when you're like little you know your parents serve you a plate of something it's like this is food this is what you know we're having for dinner tonight and it's they don't like, show you this do they no they probably haven't no. seen it themselves they probably haven't a lot of things i think part of the reason why you know, you get served that too, is people don't, not everyone knows this goes on. You've been conditioned, haven't you? Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, actually. I agree with that, I agree yeah. with that, yeah. I agree. You've been taught well, something, like I was. Been... You've been conditioned, do you know what conditioning is? No. Like, conditioning is where, like, you've been taught that these animals are food. Yeah. Yeah? That's all you see. A chicken, like, you wouldn't even be able to, like, determine the, the animal from the chicken to the food from the chicken, because they're, they're called the same thing, aren't they? 
You but she go. used to absolutely love me. You know she used to eat her meat. Me too. Me too. I know. Me too. Are you Who's the first one to give her meat? My mum my mom raised me to eat meat too. My mum's a vegan now though. It took her a couple of years, but oh she's she's come around. But she she was the first one to give me meat. And she goes, Joey, you know, now that I know what I know, I'm so sorry. Because I didn't know she wasn't exposed to it. You weren't exposed mm. to it. Your parents mm. probably did it, you know, it's yeah. not, not to make you feel guilty about it. That's all the way we've ever known is But now you know meat. what now you know what goes on to animals. Yeah. So you're conscious of it now. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I'm conscious of it. And I'm not saying that you're a bad person. You know, you've just been brought up into the dairy farming culture. Yes. Okay, so yeah. I, I think that you don't th think what you're doing is okay. morally wrong. But from the cow's point of view, they don't want to be slaughtered, do they? In Yulin, China, they have uh, dog farms. In Korea, they have dog farms. Do you think that's ethically wrong? And it's their culture. You can't really judge them, though. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, killing animals is cultural, but that doesn't yeah. mean it's ethical. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I agree, but not everyone's the same. Yeah. Yeah. If you agree with me, then that means that you should be vegan. Everyone's got to die. Yeah, but it's written. I mean, I should, come on, everyone's got to die. Is murder okay now? Written at some time, they're going to die. Like I could shoot someone in the head and they don't feel a thing. Is it's that okay? Written. It's written. <laughs> it was written. So Believe fine. It, it makes it okay because they're all going to die. It is. It's, it's life, you know, it's a circle of life. This is a food chain. I kind of do feel like, um, in a way, like there was kind of a cycle of life. I cycle of life. The circle of life? Yeah, something. Yeah. Man, it's what? People eat. People it's eat. death. It's murder. It's not life. Death is a part of life, man. Death. Yeah, natural death, not enslaving and killing and torturing and raping. That's not life. That's f evil. Millions of humans die every day. So. so millions of humans die every day. Should we go murder people? Yeah, people do get killed. Yeah, we do. Do you think it's morally justified to kill someone? you arguing for murder if I, if I, because people die. Do you know where the circle of life come from, that phrase? Um, I think it was the Lion King, but there's okay. probably something before it, I'm no, no, sure. No, 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 it came from the Lion King, so you're actually using the Lion King as a scientific source here. <laughs> Is Nowhere in biology it talks about the circle of life. Animals gotta die, plants gotta die, human beings gotta die, everyone's gonna die. It doesn't mean we have to murder. We don't have to murder. But if it's written to die... So you can choose not to murder. In a murder way, or a certain way, then it's written, you know. Car crash, do you think it's a murder? It's a car fault. Is it a person? Accidents. Fault? This is the food chain. You know, the spider eats the fly, the cat eats the mouse. You know, a tiger would eat us if we got in its way. The big fish eat little fish, even in the wild, in the sea. Big fish eat little well, fish. Well, the law of nature, right? what, what if we brought into a, a law of, to protect chickens? Right? What if we brought a law into. Because that's what we choose to do. Yeah, but I'm saying it's not a moral choice. Because it's, it's part of the food chain. <laughs> <laughs> the food chain. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm not do being disrespectful, but you are not part of the food chain. Because we have a food chain, because we have a pecking order, because we have a diet, because we have the ability. Chain, does a food like, chain mean moral? Does a food chain mean ethical? Well, what, are you, why are you the barometer of morality? I'm asking you what the moral difference is between a pig and a three-year-old and you can't answer it. But I'm asking you why you believe you can set that moral compass where you want it to set. Why, why I can set a moral compass we have is because a you chain. adhere we, to your own moral system. But we are building... So, so you adhere to a moral system where you don't think human beings should be stabbed, but you don't adhere to that same moral system you have a double standard for pigs. Oh, the fucking food chain. Yeah. Food chain. Shut up, mate. The food chain? Are you part of the food chain? The, yeah, we're the top. You're the top. We're the top of the food chain. So if you go in, a, in so the you, ocean you with get, a shark, you're going to get mauled, man. You get, uh, we're, get an, mold. we're an apex predator. You We're not predators. You gotta, you gotta tell a shark to start eating seaweed? We're not apex predators, bro. We buy our meat from the supermarket market, packed in a little package. People are disconnected from this. You gotta tell a shark to start eating seaweed. It's what it's what animals animal. do in na nature is what animals do in nature. We don't justify our actions from the actions of animals, do we? We don't dictate our morality from the actions of a lion. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other, raping each other, we'd have no morality. Yeah. We're moral agents as human beings, all right? Okay. We can make moral decisions. You can make a moral decision. Here's a carrot. Here's me. The chain goes me to carrot. That's a food chain. I think what they're saying is in school, they've seen this picture, right? With humans at the top and all other animals below them. And they're saying that that gives us the right, like might makes right. That gives us a right, because they've seen this picture in school, to exploit, abuse, and kill all animals that are perceived below us in the food chain.
any animal below us, it's then justified to stab and kill for a steak when we have plant foods. Yeah, that's what he's saying, isn't it? So dogs and elephants and rhinoceroses and lions and you know endangered elephants, we can stab those in the throat because food chain though. Using a food chain argument, when you live in a house and buy your food from the supermarket and all you have to do is move your hand to the left to get the soy milk, or walk one step over to the chickpeas away from the slashed up murdered animals, okay, is nonsense. Here's a food chain for you right here. No one got stabbed in the throat. I know which food chain I'm participating in. When you, when you eat an animal, you, you're actually doing something horrific to that animal. Because no, I'm not doing that, I purchased that from the market. No, but like, I, I don't support it, but I still drink the milk. It's not gonna change my mind whether they die or not. Yeah, well you, you're, you're consuming a product, you're demanding that they do that to cows. I'm not demanding it. Here you are. Choice. You're demanding my virtue of your dollar. So you understand supply and demand, don't you? I absolutely do, yes. So when you pay for animal products, animals, all the animals go to the slaughterhouse, yeah? Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. This is where we're at, supply and demand. You don't understand economics? Um, mate, I'm not, I'm not Jesus, I'm a human being. Human being living a selfish life. Yeah, well, I mean, we're trying to protect the animals from people who are paying for them to be in these places. Yeah. So when you go into the supermarket, the restaurant, whatever, you buy dairy, you buy meat, I'm protecting the, the animals from you because you're yeah. paying for them to be in these places and you treat them like a, an object to, to eat and to take things from. These animals only exist because we mass breed them and selectively breed them. These are animals, specifically food slaves, these ones here. They don't, they don't exist in the wild. Pig, well, borg stuff. Wild boar yeah. do, but not these type of pigs that you're eating. I'm saying that uh, this is a human um, manufactured freak show. I can agree with that, yeah. 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 You pay for it, that's what I'm saying. And how are you not a hypocrite if you claim to be against this, but you're eating it, you're paying for it? You're paying for people to be cruel to animals. Well, and you're against you cruelty. Know, when you say I'm paying, you are. I'm buying steak. Right? You're paying for animal cruelty. Paying for production that goes all the way down there. You pay people to stab and torture animals. Yeah, but I'd rather they didn't. But you pay for it, so you're contradicting yourself in your own moral framework. I'm not contradicting myself in my own moral framework. That's completely Explain wrong. how not. I can explain my not, because I'm paying for the steak, not for the cruelty. When you buy a steak, you pay for cruelty. There's yeah. no escaping that. Do you care about, like, the suffering of the animals? Well, yeah. Okay. But I'm not going to... Stop causing it? Yeah. Yeah. But do you see how it's inconsistent? Like, argue against that, you can't, can you? Yeah, it's, like it's, it's a solid you know, Let's just say I pay him right now to stab you, right? Yeah. Uh, he's responsible for stabbing you, but yeah. he wouldn't have stabbed you unless I paid him. Okay, yeah, so when you went, yeah, so yeah, he still stabbed you. We're both responsible. Yeah, because see, my daughter, my daughter would kill a human before she kill an animal. And that's but she does, she eats them, so she does kill them. Yeah, well, but what I'm saying, she doesn't kill. Them. She pays for them to be killed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Once you understand that by consuming these products, animals have to be raped, enslaved, killed, bred into existence. Once you understand that, the more you you then become morally culpable. So if we start purchasing these pro uh, products, what happens to these places? They go under. So that's how we change it, yeah? Yeah. By virtue of supply and demand, yeah. our money funds these industries. When we remove money from these industries and buy plant milk, we boycott the murder. Yeah. And that's when they start to go down, they stop breeding cows into existence, uh, the, the numbers decline, and these industries, they go out of business. Yeah. yeah, and it's a lot better for the cows and the livestock and everything. Dairy farmers can start making, you know, plant food products. And if you stop buying the cheese, these animals stop being exploited and killed, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you got a point there. If enough of us boycott, I mean, dairy industry is already looking a little bit because people are finding alternatives and finding out about this and the alternatives are pretty good. You know, like the Subway, let's say Subway, I buy the plant-based meatballs, they have to replace those plant-based meatballs with new ones, yeah? If I buy the chicken, they have to replace that chicken with new chicken, so it comes from somewhere. But how do you know that person, whoever you got the Subway from, didn't just touch uh, anything to do with meat? and just touch your meatball. Well, it doesn't matter because that, does, doesn't, that doesn't support does. the industry. It, it, no, it doesn't. But when you're consuming these products, you're pushing the button on these animals. You're saying, die for me, forcing them to die, forcing them to live a life of hell. You're, you're adding to the problem. But when you go vegan, you're, you're doing your best kind of thing to eliminate your contribution to it. When you pay for animal products, you're making a vote. Yeah, yeah, abuse those animals for me, torture those animals for me, chuck them in a gas chamber for me, stab them in the throat for me and chop them up for me. Who's the animal abuser? The vegan or the person who pays for this? Um, nobody dies for milk to be created. 
you don't have to kill a cow to get milk, otherwise you can't get the milk if you kill them. Do you know what happens if a cow isn't milked regularly? I don't think it's good for you to drink the milk from another species when we wean when we're a child, don't we? We wean when we're young. Yeah. So why do we still drink breast milk from another mother? Who does that? Well, do you drink dairy? Dairy products are breast milk from a pregnant cow. For babies. Yeah. Why are they pregnant to begin with? No. Nature, Who did that? Nature? Do you think the no, dairy industry relies you, on nature? You know, you know what I mean by, you know, that. Uh, well, well I, I know what you're saying, yes, and I'm, I'm jumping one step ahead of you, mm -hmm. because we forcibly impregnate them. Cows have to be pregnant to produce milk. Oh, I, yeah. I, I didn't know that, no. Yeah. I feel like the dairy industry is one of the most violent industries on earth. Yeah. Because they, they, here in the UK, they take the, the calves away and they yeah, kill yeah. the male calves. Yeah. On the farm, they just shoot them in the head. Um, the female calves, they grow up for a, about a year and then they get forcibly impregnated, have their calves yeah, taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After four or five years, they, get, they go to the slaughterhouse, get turned into beef and leather. Yes, I yes. mean, it's a horrible industry. I don't think taking children away from mothers is okay just so we can have cheese. When we can have vegan cheese made of plants. No slaughterhouse is needed. This is the dairy industry. This is um, forcible impregnation. Um, so, artificial insemination? Uh, well, you, you could call it whatever euphemism you, makes you feel more comfortable, but if you put a human being in this position, they hold them down in a cattle crush, they don't want this done to them, this is going into her rectum, okay? Now she's struggling. I would call this rape. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? This is the, now that now they bear children, because dairy cows, you know about the dairy industry, they have to have a calf to produce milk, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they take the calves away because they don't want the calves drinking the milk because it's a product, yeah? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's wrong to say that if cows are being impregnated against their will, do you think that's wrong to be to call that rape? No, I don't think it's wrong to call, to call it rape because it is. Because if, if that was to happen to a person, then it would be. Mm. So I'm saying the act is rape. Yeah. The action is sexual violation. Yeah, because they're forcing the cow to be impregnated. Yeah. yeah well, my aim is to stop the rape, the torture, the, the kidnap, rape. and the killing. So what do you think happens to the dairy cows when they can't produce milk anymore? So what do you do with your dairy cows when they're pr finished producing for you? They all get murdered. Eventually. eventually. For beef. For beef. But the dairy industry support the beef industry. I don't know if you've ever followed your cows to the slaughterhouse, have you? Mm hmm You have followed your cows to the slaughterhouse? Your parents' cows, your parent has a farm, your parents have a farm. Mm -hmm. Have you followed them animals to the slaughterhouse before? We've seen the slaughterhouse before. Have you followed the animals in there and watched them die? That's what I'm asking. Hmm. I've seen footage of it, but not this. This is a dairy cow. They slaughter her because she, she just doesn't produce milk anymore. So why would they keep her? She's, she's not profitable. This is what I mean. This is how we view animals as a resource. Hmm. But all, all dairy cows go to the slaughterhouse to be shot and stabbed in the throat and killed and turned into beef. And that's why I'm saying milk is murder. Yeah. I mean, stop saying murder. It's not murder. Why not? It's killing an animal. Have you read the dictionary? And I'm saying that the act of shooting a cow in the skull and slashing their throat open is murder. Yes, it is. Because wow. if, if that was to happen to anybody else in the world, then the other person would go down for years for it. Wow. What happens to people when they finish their lives and they've... They die naturally. Yeah, so can cows. Do, you, do your cows die naturally? No. Yeah. You, you believe that the statement is true? To a degree, you can. It's like milk is murder. You ca you're taking away, you're impregnating calves over and over, uh, cows over and over again, okay. taking the calves away from them, killing the calves nines out of ten. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, it is, yeah. And it's just unnecessary and. If you go down the supermarket aisle, you, there's about 20 different plant milks. You haven't come up with a very good justification and a reason why milk isn't murder. Well, you're telling me it's murder, but it's not. So, like, we're not going to You can say it's not, but it is. <laughs> but then, if the whole country went vegan, even over the next 10 years, yeah. yeah? What would be the problem with that? You would lose, you'd have a lot more people who haven't got a livelihood. However, you're going to see people go out of jobs and that's, uh, that's another topic. Which, what's worse? Yes, obviously. So this is the livelihood argument. This is why I wanted yeah. to stop you there before. I wasn't trying to be rude, yeah. but I've heard this so many times. You know, um, when they abolished slavery, 
what would happen to the slave owners that were getting them to pick the cotton? That was their livelihood. Yeah, they had to pay a wage. Do you think that justifies slavery? No. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, why no, does it in the animal context? People have lost out of jobs, profit... And well, there'll be new opportunities for jobs, and I don't think that animal cruelty... I don't think that a job should justify what we do to animals. I think animals' lives and their, their freedom and their, you know, their well-being is more important than someone making a job that they can get another one of. Yeah, true, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. It yeah that's not an argument, dude. Well, so yeah, so like that's, not an arg that's not an ethical argument. Obviously, like, if, if, if we make a shift, we're going to be creating other jobs at yeah, the same yeah, time yeah. with... Um, Plant-based uh, innovations and yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not going to be destroying our environment and exactly. murdering and exploiting and subjugating the innocent beings, yes. which is our focus. Yes. I, I don't. I don't support the practice of this kind of practice, but I support the farmer that needs a job, that needs a, you know. So you you support the oppressor, not the vic the victim. I support the victim. You support the oppressor. I mean, do we have enough money to give them to find a different job? I mean, they can they can find another job. These animals can't find another life. They've been enslaved and murdered. Who do you care more about? Who who who's suffering matters more here? The problem is also, look at the farmer, right? I mean, look at this guy. They Do you like this guy? No, not really. <laughs> Why not? He needs a job. I mean, His job is to rape and kill animals. My job is to stop I mean, people abusing animals, all right? Is there now, any, now, other people yeah. can work in innovating, you know, plant food production. That's their job. My job is to stop you from abusing these animals. Well, my husband has to work there yeah, but, for uh, wait, One second. For wages, You're paying for... for to live, to pay our bills, to pay our yeah. rent. So your, your money, other yeah. meat eaters' money, are causing these slaughterhouses to exist, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if everyone put their money into different products, then he'd have a job somewhere else. Yeah. And you answer me the question of how many animals die to protect your crops that you eat. Do you know how much insect the animal have to get killed to make way for the plant to grow and stuff? We know that billions of insects get killed and murdered brutally every year yeah, in the preparation of vegan feelings, food though, and in preparation of, of bread. Because that's kind of what you're doing. You're going to go, do you know how many animals are killed for your crops? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I'm aware. Yeah. Do you know? I do know it's a lot. You know? It's a lot more if you're eating animals. Is, yeah, well, if you say so, then, you well, know. Because well, pigs are eating grain. Chickens are eating grain. Chickens are eating soy. Yeah. Just animal agriculture alone causes more suffering and murder than any other industry on earth by far. Just incalculable suffering. It's 74 billion land animals, it's a FAO stat, and one to three trillion marine animals every year. Plus, all of the animals and insects that die in the crops used to feed the animals. Now, 83% of all farmland is used for animal agriculture. Uh, this is a study by Oxford University, Joseph Poor. Comparing accidental crop deaths with this slavery, these all these animals, you know where they go? All these sow mothers, these are mothers here. They all go to a gas chamber. Do you ever see these people marching down the bread aisle? Do you? No, they don't. You know why? Because they eat bread. So they're hypocrites. We've got some root vegetables. This is where vegans get their food from. Crops. And Pierce Morgan likes to think there's no different between eating from here and eating from in there. Wow. Nice logic, Pierce. Most of the crops are fed to animals in animal agriculture. 90% of the soy, most of the majority of cropland is fed to animals in animal agriculture. I've never so seen that, a cow eating an avocado uh, Excuse or me, they eat fruits. hay, they eat grasses, <laughs> they eat grain. Pigs eat grain. 90% of the pigs in the UK are factory farms. So all of those crops are going to animals. You're responsible for all of those crops. So when you eat a piece of chicken, it's magnitudes more crops than just eating the, the grain. So I don't know what you're trying to say. Like, I eat two to 3,000, 4,000 calories a day. It's just plants. Okay, it's what these animals are being fed anyway, but magnitudes more if you're feeding it to the animals and then eating the flesh. I'm saying it's a much more efficient use of, of our food if we just eat the food directly than feed it to 70 billion animals. And I don't know how you could disagree with that mathematically. It's just easy, simple things. Now, you can reduce this farmland use by 75% by adopting a vegan lifestyle. So that is a lot of insect harm, crop deaths, pesticide use, all of that stuff. Uh, species extinction as well. Uh, animal agriculture from wiping out all this uh, land, forest land and all that. Obviously we can't live in a way that causes no harm, so why do we cause the maximum amount of suffering and death? You know what I mean? Like I'm not saying I don't cause any harm by existing. That's not what I'm uh, asking you to do either. I'm saying why do we still enslave on top of that and kill on top of that when we don't need to? We could try to at least eliminate the exploitation and murder of animals as far as practically possible. Yes. 
What I am saying is that a vegan's individual decision will sometimes cause death, but overall what they want over that um, death takes priority. You're, you're sort of saying that we hold a position that we don't uh, generally. So you, you would sure. say that we, we, we want to, you know, not kill no matter what. Like all death is has to be avoided no matter what the context or what the, the reason for it. Now, I would say that, that most rational vegans don't hold that position. I know when you look at the, the definition, like you could take that definition and go, this applies to mowing the lawn. That's that's killing. And vegans are hypocrites, right? In order to be a hypocrite, you have to first, you'd have to say, my position is that I'm, I'm against death in every single category, no matter the context. Now, when it comes to industry deaths, th this is a big category, industry death. So I would I would say that using the argument, okay, uh, plant foods probably kills more insects. The fact that we eat crops, you know, we eat plants and those plants are protected with pesticides sprayed with crops and they harvest the field. Sometimes, uh, you know, insects and rodents might die in the crop production. I mean, if you set us, if you set a moral standard, let me put it to you like this, Liam. Yes, if we set a standard where we can't cause any deaths in industry, I mean, that would just lead to some ridiculous, absurd yeah. Um, conclusions. So we want to have like a logically consistent moral system that doesn't lead to ridiculous, absurd conclusions. Like I have to walk around in a Hessian bag, live in a jungle. Um, you know, you can't practicably, like possible and practicably, avoid insect deaths. You can't avoid deaths by by living because civilization itself causes uh, this big category of industry death. Now I'll I'll show you why we don't have a double standard here. Uh, animals die in crop deaths and on uh, road accidents and in construction. Human beings die in road, ac road accidents on farms and in construction. That doesn't make us a murderer, okay? It uh, doesn't yeah. make us a murderer to support transport. But why would I hold some out there standard for insects when I participate in industry industries that are, are, are causing people to die? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, yeah, I get that. That's a good point. Uh, like, I don't have a double standard there. Now, I would ask you, would you support a massive holocaust of people so you can have a cheeseburger? No, of course not. So choosing a vegan burger over a chicken burger is so easy. Like, why don't we do that? I would argue that it's not a big ask. It's a small lifestyle change. And I think it's a very reasonable philosophy. And it's a logical one. I mean, it's just, okay, here's a bunch of animals being tortured and killed for like something like a burger. All you have to do is go into the supermarket and make a different choice. And you, you've eliminated not all the suffering in your life. You, you haven't eliminated all the suffering, but you've eliminated this grotesque, unjustifiable, needless amount of suffering on top of the suffering we already caused for a general amount of well-being.